And I'm with my friend Brigitte. Um, we're really excited to do this video for you guys. I want we want to give you um, kind of some bullet points. First off, you know, telling you exactly what we're going to be talking about to see if this could, this is even a video you want to watch and be a part of. I'm really excited about it because right when we first met, because we've met recently, um, just a couple weeks ago, we both wanted to talk about the same topic. We knew we wanted to collaborate, make something fun for you guys, and we wanted to talk about relationships. We wanted to talk about our past relationships, how we were raised, what our child dynamic was, our family dynamic, how that affects our present, how to heal blockages that we have right now in our life, things that are holding us back or are correlated with our past. And we just want to like dig into that. We want to teach you guys how to, you know, attract more help, like healthier relationships, more spiritual friends, finding your soul tribe. I mean, this all ties in with just um, seeing the world in a more positive light and um, just just bringing in that awareness, right? So I want you to touch on what we're going to talk about, too, like bring bring your two cents, and then we'll just kind of get into it. Yeah, so I'm going to focus more on the childhood, on a child, and on that dynamics of parent and child, and then what we bring in this life. And we'll also... Be I think we'll also be including our own experiences in it. So some people were asking me about this before, but I was like, we need to make a video on it. And Megan is going to share her own experiences and how she healed herself too. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be raw, vulnerable, keep it real. Because a lot of our viewers, a lot of people that watch us have very similar experiences to us, I've noticed. A lot of similar mm -hmm. energy, right? Because we're like, attracting our soul tribe even just through our yeah. youtube channel so a lot of you watching i feel like you can relate to this um what similar things that we've been through or maybe not exactly the exact same thing but similar emotions um because a lot of uh people watching that are drawn to our channels are more sensitive empathetic souls who have a higher intuition and who had these traits as a kid um and needed certain types of you know um, certain types of care certain um just certain kind of emotional support, like a specific kind that we didn't all get. Um, and just kind of talking about that as well. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of people have noticed, uh, especially the last week, a lot of people commenting, a lot of them went through near death experiences. Would it be mm -hmm. childhood? Would it be like when they were grown up or tragedies in general? And uh, a lot of them found themselves more awake or they found their life paths through that. So that is exciting too. Well, not the tragedy part, but you know, the whole like shake up. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Cause I know you, we've both had them. And then also like a lot of people that follow me have health issues. So I feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of like, it's, it's not, it's almost a near death experience because you feel like your body's failing you. And even though it's not yeah. like a, a sudden thing that happens, it's, it's a wake up call. Right. And it, and it yeah. can happen through, through, you know, having, pain physical pain or like i know we wanted to touch on anxiety and depression because those things are very prevalent um and they actually they're they can be our best teachers right when we experience these emotions because they do wake us up to this to a better life to a more spiritual more purposeful life yeah for sure yeah all right so, so let's let you start okay cool. all right so we want to talk about our past because when I work with my clients a lot, it's, I like to dig into the past. I like to talk about, you know, when we were from when we were born to when we were about seven or eight. And, and I know that's like, well, how do I remember like what I was like or what happened then? Because that's the hardest. I mean, obviously that's the hardest part to remember, but when we can kind of um, correlate the emotions we're feeling today with what we experienced in the past, what we can look at our, our parents' characteristic traits of how they raised us, um, what kind of environment that we were in, we can kind of piece together um, how that's affected us now and, and the blockages that we experience. Um, like for me, when I was a kid, you know, I had a, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a dad that was, I had a mom and dad that were very supportive, very supportive. And I never really thought of my past as being traumatic or having, having past trauma because I was raised in 
a beautiful home. I really was. But everybody has trauma. And I think validating that as well is something we want to get into because everybody Mm -hmm. experiences life. It's scary when you're a kid. It it just is. And um, it can be, especially when you're learning, you're growing and you're figuring out everything that's happening in the world. Um, And for me, like I had a mother um, that was, you know, a, a people pleaser. She liked to make everybody really happy. And so I picked up those traits over time and I wanted to just... I wanted everybody to have a good time around me. And I kind of, I gave too much of myself. I worried too much about other people. Um, So that's some, that's part of the blockages and things that I'm working through. And then I had a father who, you know, wasn't, he's very logical, practical thinker. Um, He's an engineer, a very smart man. But, you know, if I came to him with a problem, if I couldn't find a toy or, I mean, it could have been anything, I would be crying and he'd be laughing at me. He'd be laughing because he would be like, oh, you know, problems when you're four years old. But Mm -hmm. to me, that was really detrimental because I felt really stupid. I felt like I was being shamed. And I kind of grew up with that energy of feeling like, oh, I shouldn't cry about anything. You know, I shouldn't complain about things. I should hold these things in because if I talk about things like this, I'm stupid and I'm and I'm, you know, I shouldn't be vulnerable. So I think, you know, coming to those kind of conclusions and kind of uh, it's just really powerful because that's when we have these like breakthroughs and I've had so many of them um, just realizing how the traits that I've picked up from my parents and just the kind of like emotions and things like that. So um, yeah. And I want you to talk about your experiences too, because I don't want to talk about all of mine, but I think one more thing I want to say is just like sending love back to your childhood, right? Like sending compassion because sometimes we focus so much on the future or the present, right? Everyone's like, be in the now, be in the now, which, yeah, that's so important. And it's important to have goals and dreams. But to look into the past, I think, is important with a with a consciousness, with a type of awareness of healing and sending love back to this little child that we, we are, that we still have in our soul, um, because there are broken fragments and things that need to be that need to be healed and addressed. And um, it's just powerful. I've had so many good insights over the past even year just doing this kind of work yeah that's very powerful actually I don't know why I want to start talking about 2020 which I didn't think I was I was going to talk about but this just ties in you know I was recording a video before leaving London and moving back home about how 2020 is all going to be about you know people spending more time at home and you know uh, healing their relationships with parents but Mm -hmm. I didn't know how that is going to impact me as well where I started digging more or healing you know a relationship with both of my parents and uh, I want to talk about how different parents um, maybe raise children you know and I want to focus on the pushing type of um, parent where you know you're being asked to do certain tasks you know have you done this have you done that have you done this and uh, that kind of a kid, when they grow up, they tend to be very procrastinating, where it leads to a kid being more lazy because they don't want to go by that because they were pushed too much. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. there's another type of parent where they let the you know, kid do whatever they want. And uh, it's, um, there are two things. So you can have a kid who is quite up, out, out of control, but we bring our own personalities in this lifetime, so it truly depends on what kind of kid we're dealing with Mm -hmm. and for me my parents never really put a pressure on me when it came to performing my mom for example when I was I had to go to my high school finals and uh, I had history um, exam that morning I remember and uh, my mom came to uh, check on me because I didn't I didn't get up you know and she was like don't you have to go to the exam like, this is your final. I'm like, mom, you know how much I don't like history? Like, I'm not going to go. And she just literally went like, okay, rest then. <laughs> but she was, she, she was so trusting in me, which was the main thing that I took out of it. She was so trusting whatever it is that I'm going to decide. I'm doing it from the heart because I was the sensitive kid when I was growing up. So I'm going to give speci- specifically parents who are raising children a link down below what kind of probably kid you're dealing with and Mm -hmm. how you can raise them better or help them out but I was the silent kind of a kid you know I would sleep for most of the time I was very also energetically open so I could you know 
feel energies and I needed to rest much more than maybe other kids. So empathy level 1000. But then, yeah. you know, my mom is very, is very caring and she's very like, you're going to do whatever you want to do. And she believed in me so much. And right. my dad was uh, more of a like, uh, it would be silly things like, no, you're not going to have piercings or, you know, okay. don't look like this or don't No, You are so like sophisticated mm-hmm. and very old fashioned. So I have two parents who are completely different. My mom is a free spirit. You know, she always uh, told me it's a job. Um, disturbs your quality of life for the job so that's the what kind of parents I was dealing with so I've taken I've noticed a bit of both you know Mm -hmm. I was a bit of that you know kid who um would go against certain things what what my dad would tell me you know like no tattoos no piercings I came back home you know my lip pierced I had seven uh, piercings here I had it in a tongue I had it in two (laughs) and it was all up to 20 something years old you know yeah and uh I, I've noticed that because my mom was so, and we had a connection, very strong connection with mom. Mom was so free spirited and she's like, do whatever the heck you want. And then there was a clash where my dad was the very opposite. And yeah. I started noticing, I think, you know, when we are kids, um, even if we don't understand what is being talked about just yet, or we, we can't speak, we feel the energies. That's why I'm saying it's very important to raise a, ch- a child in a good environment so mm-hmm. if you want to have an argument or if you really like fed up with something maybe do it you know somewhere further away it's not that you have to you know keep them in a in a safe basket that's not very healthy too but right. um, not to raise them in chaos and mm-hmm. I was raised in the chaos and the thing is what I've noticed my mom told me when we were talking really deep things you know she was like you know what uh, I was told that I was going to have a boy, like strong boy, like an oak tree. That's what was said, you know. And when you were born, no one was expecting a girl. And she was like, oh, my God, we're going to have a, a girl. And my dad came to the hospital and uh, he was like, I, where's my boy, you know. Um, and I was a baby and I think I already could feel the um, energy of like, mm. Mm-hmm. And what happened over time, I just actually started digging into this when I came back home more. Um, what happened over time, I became very distant. I was always very distant with my dad. You know, it was very for- formal. We yeah. do love each other to bits, but mm-hmm. there is some kind of a blockage there where it just it's just very formal. And um, my dad can be a very tough guy and very kind of king of swords guy. Uh, when it comes to communicating with other people, but when it comes to me, um, he's very cautious. And I mm-hmm. think maybe because he's feeling that he's done something, you know, wrong in the past where he pushed me away. So now he doesn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. So Well, and that's probably something his dad did to him. So he can probably feel that energy because a lot of these habits are passed down from generations, right? So it's like, you know, their habits are young. Uh, well, okay. young. 40 years old his dad died 40 years old you know overworking himself to death and um yeah I think it had a big impact on him as a as a young adult and I think he I think he shut down then because he's super close like if we could talk about emotional blockages and if I (laughs) should give you an example that would be my dad and I want to talk about emotional blockages a bit you know when we have repressed emotions Mm-hmm. And when we feel like we couldn't express ourselves or we can't express ourselves um, creatively, we were told, no, you know, go right. study like medicine. Yeah. People like that usually do have um, health issues like or depression or heart condition, which my dad has both of them or problems with the gut. So yeah. that's something also to pay attention to. Yes. Yeah. That was, that was me. I mean, I mean, I think I told you, I don't know if I talked about this last time, when, because we tried to, we did practice filming this video before, but, um, when I was born into the world, I popped a hole in my lung, um, and I almost died, and, um, so even coming into this world was very traumatic for me, you know, and then, um, I, at a young age, I had a lot of throat problems, I had really bad allergies, um, I had super chronic, like, fatigue, tired all the time, like you were, um, I slept so much, and then, and, and when I got older, I started developing as, like, stomach issues, IBS, um acid reflux I mean like you name it like I had so many issues and 
And I can see now uh, after doing all this healing inner work and that, you know, how much that was correlated with all of my emotions, like how, you know, uh, holding certain things in, not speaking my truth, not Mm -hmm. feeling like I was a creative being, um, all these kind of things, these emotions were all tied with all of these specific health problems so it's all very tied in and and, um, once you start to address these issues that we're talking about not only do you you start to feel lighter and less anxious less depressed but you have physical ailments and health problems they'll start to dissipate as well because Mm -hmm. it took me a while to accept that like emotional healing was really important for healing my chronic illness um, and accepting that, uh, I think it, it can be tricky for some people as well, but yeah, it's all, it's all connected and it's all correlated to how you were treated as a child, how your parents treated you, the habits that were, you know, passed down to you from generations and generations. Like I remember talking to my dad recently and I kind of told him, I kind of opened up about, you know, the shaming thing that he did to me. And I, I told him, I was like, listen, I'm not accepting an apology. I'm not mad at you about it. This is just something I've come to realize uh, how it affected me. And then we kind of got talking about it. And he was like, I was like, was your dad like that? He's like, oh yeah. Like he always laughed at me about everything. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, and it was just something that his dad did. And he probably felt really insecure as a child, but then he grew up doing the same thing, even though it had that detrimental effect. And then you know, it was passed down to me. And now I'm like, okay, no, I'm breaking the cycle. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do this to people. I'm not going to feel, you know, shamed about my truth. Um, I'm not going to feel embarrassed about it, you know, Um, and making videos was a big part of me overcoming that, getting out of my comfort zone, right? Yeah. Yeah, And that's the most important thing, I think. It's also very connected to where you have trauma or what parts of your body suffering when, when we connect chakras, right? That's usually um, very connected to your life path too. Have you noticed? Yeah. Now you're talking to me, you know, when you found what it is that you want to do, you want to counsel people, you want to help them out. And you did have a problem with that throat area. Right? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. I even had like really, um, a dry throat issue too, like dehydration. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't even talk very long before I would like start to like lose my voice or I had to like chug water all day just so I could like talk. Yeah. Like, and I couldn't scream. I couldn't yell. Like if I ever went to a concert, like I was, I couldn't speak for days afterwards. So yeah, I had a lot of like blockages. And, and when I started doing my videos, I mean, it just started healing that. Like now I can talk. I still have a little bit of sometimes a little bit of issues, but it's so faint and small compared to what it used to be. But yeah, it cleared the blockages out and it just it healed. It healed my throat by, you know, sharing my truth, speaking about my chronic illness journey on my yeah. Instagram. And now speaking on like, you know, tarot cards and spirituality and sharing my gifts, it's just brought in so much healing. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is so true. I was a silent kid, so I wasn't like speaking. So I never imagined myself speaking publicly because for me, yeah. that was something like, oh my God, you know, right. I right. can speak myself as well. So this is very interesting how that pans out as well. And mm-hmm. grounding too, you know, I was, I'm still like finding my ways, I'm grounding myself, but because of the sensitivity and doing the work that I do, I do have a lot of mediumships as well, where, you know, have to call, you know, another line up there. So I find myself not sleeping very well and I'm working with that too. And I'm also teaching, you know, I found my ways and I'm teaching how to ground other people, you know, what the ways they can find. So through those weaknesses, we find what it is that we might be doing in life. And I think it's important to step out of the comfort zone and say, Hey, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to show others how to do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's like turning pain into power. It's literally yeah. turning all of your weaknesses and making them your strengths, right? Like, cause that's part of like your lesson and your soul's purpose here on earth is, is coming out of that is, is experiencing that pain and then either helping people through that pain. You know, I feel like for a lot of people it is, it's when you have such strong discomfort with depression or anxiety or a physical ailment, it's like your compassion rises you have so much compassion because you don't want other people to go through that you're like no like if I can stop one person I will do it right so you get this fire inside of you and then Mm -hmm. that kind of turns into like your purpose and you're healing so much like yeah so much I mean we can we can so like heal everything in ourselves from childhood everything is in our body really I always like to say don't have to look for 
external sources how to heal yourself is all here you know even the way our face is shaped i don't know if you know about the face readings you know when people analyze the structure of your face and they tell you what strengths no. you have, have so, you for example, one? so for example the creative people usually they do have or you know longer noses or this area the middle period area is more expressed so the creative people are the emotional people where they might tend to have issues with the emotions you know where people who do have a uh, very strong jaws you know these are the people who would tend to be really good when it comes to health working out and all of those things and i'm looking at your jaw now and you're very into health you know i, and do. That's I have that's a very true. defiant jaw <laughs> yeah. yeah so there are so many ways to recognize and kind of analyze yourself and decode it that we all just need to go within or even look at the exterior of your body and it's going to tell you, you know. Mhm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I guess I never really thought about that. Like the structure of your face and, and stuff. We can uh we can talk about this maybe someday because there are so many things like your eyes, how close, how apart they are and okay. there are so many things. Okay. Well, guys, comment down below if you guys want uh, <laughs> want a video on that because that's interesting to me I mean that's this is the first one I've heard of it so I mean we won't obviously get into too much of that today <laughs> but um I also want to talk about um like the kind of I feel like this correlates with everything that we've been talking about but I know like a lot of people that watch our channels um you know are trying to attract um their soulmate right and and healthier relationships and um, healthier friendships and things like that, people that empower you. And um, again, it really does tie in with um, your past experiences and how you were raised. So if you're trying to like find your soulmate or your soul's purpose, your soul tribe, like all these things, it really is important to do this kind of work we're talking about um, and take the steps to kind of like, you know, analyze uh, your childhood, meditate on it and, you know, really just go within because that's what's going to shift your reality is kind of not just like realizing what happened in the past, but practicing acceptance and forgiveness for some of you that need to practice more forgiveness. Because even though I have a good relationship with my mom and dad and my siblings, there was still some little bits of resentment from certain things that had happened in the past. Um, and I think those can go really unnoticed. Mm -hmm. So I think um, just bringing awareness to any of that um, and practicing full acceptance of exactly how they are, even if they're, they need to be more this to you or they need to be more that or they should have done this when you were a kid, you know, practicing acceptance that they were doing the best that they possibly could. And yeah, I know they had their own trauma. Yeah, they had their own trauma and then they were literally doing the best that they could. And I know for, for some people with more traumatic childhoods, you know, that are abusive, that can be hard to hear. And, and, um, but this was something that I've learned through different authors and books. And um, I can't remember, oh, Brene Brown talks about, talks about people doing the best that they can. And if you, if you want to know more about that, look up her, um, her theory on that. It's brilliant. Um, but yeah, kind of recognizing their trauma and realizing that in the more abusive that they were, if for some of you watching, if you did have abusive parents or somebody that you know walked out on your family or something like they were going through their own personal hell like mm -hmm. not to give them like justification but I think it's important to recognize that like they yeah there's no excuse for what they did yeah but that they were going through hell hell in their mind because the more hatred somebody has towards other people the more hatred they have within their body that's just consuming them and they don't mm -hmm. know how to handle it they don't know how to release it they don't know how to heal it yeah, and it's all about tracking back, you know, their parents, the grandparents, and all of that, you know, ancestral line, where they're saying, you know, the way to heal your ancestral line is to heal yourself, so we can break from those patterns, you know. And I want to talk a bit about the relationship with dad and mom, because I started talking about those things here, where relationship with dad is all about, you know, if you do have a weak relationship with dad or dad maybe have left home or anything like that you might tend to notice that you maybe have difficulties with your own foundation meaning standing on your own feet that can mm -hmm. go to finances you know career and things like that when it comes to mom obviously um if you have issues with mom that is going to be probably maybe repressed emotion maybe lack of compassion all of those things in the emotional department too so mm -hmm. i wanted to give an example for example of my own family where i think it's going to be much clearer how that impacts 
uh, okay. people. But also, I'm going to include science too, because there are so many aspects that we bring, you know, we bring so much when we're born. So mm-hmm. my dad and my brother have much weaker relationship purely to the um the way they both tend to lead their lives. My brother is all about health and fitness, you know, never drink, never smoke, that type of a guy. My dad is more into, oh, I'm going to have beer, so I'm going to do whatever I want. And they do have very weak relationship. Mm-hmm. So even if uh, my dad was present in my brother growing up, and my brother has spent quite a long time living with parents. Like I was gone when I was 18. He was still living with them on and off, I think up to his 30s or so. But because the relationship wasn't healed, it was just more like, okay, I'm just living here kind of type. Um, My brother still has those, you know, issues. He's kind of coming out of it now, which I'm really happy about. But he had those issues when it came to stability and money. And uh, he's very motivated. He's very driven. He has a lot of ideas. And uh, I was someone who was like, yeah, I'm going to make it happen abroad because there's nothing for me to do here. I'm going to explore the world. My brother yeah. is a Virgo, so he's very grounded, and he's, see, um, I'm all fire, so I was going and getting it somewhere else where mm-hmm. I was studying, I was working and studying, but uh, because living in London was so expensive, I still felt that impact of not having a, a good enough relationship with my dad where I struggled with money. It's mm-hmm. I, actually ironic until I came back home and I started healing relationship with mm-hmm. my dad where I started noticing everything just went like this. And now I can do so many things. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, yeah. Yeah. When my brother now he is, um, it's not that their relationship is perfect now, but it's much better than it was before because they used not to talk before and, you know, have like breaks from each other and stuff. Right. Now be so much better. They talk, they, you know, communicate, they express their, themselves better and my brother's career started to go much better than it was before, you know, on finances in general. So I would pay attention to that. And yeah. um, with moms, it's, with moms, I don't know. I have a really good relationship with mom. But the thing is, she tends to be very anxious as a person. Even if she cleans the house, she does, she needs to do it here and now and quickly, you know. And I'm yeah. like calm down yeah. and I've learned you know how to calm down because first thing mm-hmm. I've taken it from her the anxiety and oh my god there's so many things happening I need to think about this and that and that, and that you know and then she yeah. gets lost mm-hmm. where I was like why am I like this you know why am I so yes I know I do have the intuitive intuitive side and I do have a lot of downloads that is not helping but I got it from her because that's what I was seeing you know her worried over, over little things too much mm-hmm. And I started healing that with myself and saying, hey, okay, today I have so much to do, but one task at a time. And it doesn't work all the time. We cannot be perfect. But whenever it doesn't work, I just tend maybe to do half of the tasks that I have, you know, and acknowledge that that day is not going to be as good as maybe it could be. But I mean... It's just it perfect. It's perfect. It's all perfect. Yeah. Like it still is. Like, it's balanced, I mean, I right? Have, you have a really good day and you have a really shit today. So put it yeah. together, it's balanced. <laughs> but I actually have that same issue that, you, you know, I have similar relationship with my mother that you do. Like my mother's super loving, but yeah, she's always kind of anxious about everything, every little thing, even things she doesn't need to be. And, and it's interesting too, because my dad, like their energies together kind of amplified some of that because my dad has this energy of always needing to be busy. His mom was like that. Like, if you're not busy, you're useless. Like, if you're not doing something constantly, like, you're wasting time. Like, wow, you know. so we both kind of like. So yeah. my dad's like always working on something. And then, but he kind of puts this pressure on my mom. Like, if my mom's mm-hmm. sitting around a lot, he's like, he'll look at her. Like, it's kind of like this, like, you know, and, and now, like, I'm, I'm at my parents' house. And, like, they do that to me sometimes. They're like. They're like, okay, what are you doing in there, Megan? I'm like, are you working? Are you keeping busy? And I'm like, don't put that on me. Like, I don't want to get involved in your dynamics. Like, no, I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. But it, it's, it's, it's helping me heal that even more because when we amplify these energies, you know, um, it, it gives us an opportunity to, be, to make it uh, your awareness higher of it, how it's impacting everything in your life. And then it's like, okay, what practical steps, like you said, what can we do? We can write a to-do list. Like I have 
I'm going to do these many things this day and that's going to be enough and I'm going to be okay with that and we'll do the rest tomorrow. But that's a similar thing that, you know, I struggle with sometimes. It's like doing enough, being productive enough. And yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, and you started talking about it. So I guess I'm going to include it in this video. We'll see what we're going to talk about next. Maybe people are going to suggest what they want us to talk about. Because yeah, we've like on quite a lot of things. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about the four different intellects, you know, that we have. So we talked about the emotional one, right? So emotional tends to be stronger in females because emotion is creativity and all of that. Now, if it's repressed, we talked about, you know, it can go into depression, you know, and then maybe heart disease and all of those things. Uh, people can research that. Now we have the mental, you know, the mind one too, where if it's, um, if it's very, um, let's say, hyped up, then I, I see it like, you know, scales of 10, each of them. And I think people could actually write it down. The emotional, the mental, the action, and the spiritual. And you can, you can write down what number you think you are in each one. Because it's very important when it comes to finding a good match in partnerships. So, for example, if my action-based intellect is really low, where well, I'm like a two. And I do and have, have a very good... And describe what that means low. Like, I don't... Like, I'm not very motivated. Is that what you mean? Like, high? So, like, 10 would be, like, these are my strengths. Like, this okay. is what I'm really good at. And this is my weakness. That, okay. So, I'm going to give you, like, my own example, right? So, my spirituality, I'd say it's a 10, right? I can discuss things with you here, Megan. Like, we could yeah. go everywhere. The intellectual <laughs> part is high, too. But I would give it, like, an 8 because I could read more than I do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I'm touching on the uh, spiritual. I know that side, but I also know, you know, because I studied so much architecture is that, you know, dry intellect, mm -hmm. as I like to call it, you know, books, 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 and knowing things how they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then my action intellect is quite high because I'm on fire. So mm -hmm. for me, what I really need is someone who does have a lower action intellect where mm -hmm. They say, hey, but maybe you're gonna you wanna lay in today, you know? Or they are someone yeah. who's like, hey, maybe you don't need to talk about spirituality today. Do you wanna just go and play, I don't know, rugby? You know, so right. I need a partner who's balancing me out. Right. And I would encourage right. people to write those things down. So the emotional, we all know, you know, it's creativity, mental is you know, books and your research that you like to do. So these are your um teachers you know in school and those uh, you know great people you see online spreading knowledge and then yeah. action based are you know the sportsmen and people who are businessmen too you know i'm gonna make my money i know how to do it and yeah. then spiritual intellect is you know something we are doing right now <laughs> yeah. talking about spirituality and this life so it's important to know where it is that you are lacking and you're going to notice how you are, maybe if parents don't get along, where one of them is lacking or maybe where both of them are too intense in one, for example, in the action one. So if both of your parents, they're all about go, 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 you might find that being like so imbalanced and maybe there is going to be some drama there, you know, or they might clash, you know, or they might completely not see each other. They're both going to be businessmen, right? Female right. and male. So right. That's something to research for people, too, if they want to, but it's important, I think. Well, that makes sense. That's, like, interesting. I like how you cor correlated that with the parents because, yeah, that having that off balance of energy in your household and, and, you know, being raised by that, it kind of wear, it can wear you down. It can kind of confuse you. It can kind of, yeah. like, and, and, you know, earlier you were talking kind of about, how you're equally your mom and your dad and you have like you notice your traits and like both of them and like I feel like that too but my mom and dad even though they're very like active and they like to stay busy kind of people they're very different at the same time and I think those energies can kind of like uh, pull at you too kind of pull at you mm -hmm. too when you're being raised by two different very people and you're like oh I'm very like compassionate and I care about people but then my dad's like very like sarcastic and likes to like make a joke of everything and I have that side of me too so I think that's yeah. kind of like I just I don't know I just like bringing it up because I feel like it kind of correlates with all of that yeah like give it an example of maybe a male who is let's take that scale one to ten 
male's emotional intelligence, uh, let's say the way he was raised, is two. And the female he's with is eight. So she goes, I love you three times a day. And he goes, I love you once a year. And, you know, that's going to yeah. be a clash because she will stop feeling that she's loved, even though he loves her, because the emotional intellect is not similar. It doesn't have to be the same. But if it's a big gap, then you're going to have issues there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. I forgot to start like timing this when we started. So I'm like, I have no idea how long we think it was. 35 um, minutes, 11 seconds. Oh, perfect. Okay. You got it. You got it. <laughs> um, but what else do we want to talk about? Um, I think well, one thing I want to bring up when, uh, with what we were talking about of healing, because I think a lot of people want more like tips, like obviously it's practicing the awareness, writing down traits yeah. of, like your mother and father, but then mm -hmm. like, going into meditation with that intention like maybe you have a certain conversation with your mother or father or a memory that pops up or right something and you're like oh maybe there's something to that maybe there's a message from that you know take that intention into your meditation right sit sit quiet or you can journal but like say out loud like to your guides to spirit to source energy your higher self you know whatever you believe in but say out loud like I want to heal this I know there's something um that needs to be healed something that needs to be forgiven accepted in this area and I, I just pray for guidance and um a clear idea of what needs to be healed and you'll be very surprised by what memory memories come up what kind of feelings come Vision. up yeah and then so, so for some of you you know it'll be easier just to like lay down in the silence and you know maybe put on some like meditation music or i like to work with hertz frequencies for my heart chakra i think that's really powerful to open up your heart space because that's where i held a lot of my blockages um or you could you, you could use any kind of like solar plexus energy source right any like hertz hertz frequencies for your intuition of uh, your throat chakra your solar plexus um and and kind of asking like your body talking to your body too it's saying like what's hurting my heart what blockages do i have in my heart what needs to be healed because when our beauty our body's always communicating to us they're mm -hmm. always like signaling us with our emotions with our pain so when we can kind of talk back and say like okay i'm sitting here i'm listening or like get your journal out if you're a writer like and, and just start writing and you'd be surprised at what will come up like be patient mm -hmm. with yourself take breaks take deep breaths you know, and, and take your time, but you'll be surprised with how much healing you can get done with setting that intention, talking to your body, praying, and then um, and then listening and using what what's best for you. And I use both. Sometimes writing, I feel like the need to write. Sometimes it, a lot of times it's me just laying there and just um, memories coming in as a child, and then emotions, and then it, it tying into a conversation I had with a friend. That was similar to a feeling I had when I was young. And it's like, oh, that's why I'm, I'm this way. And that's why I feel this way about this person. And that's why I talk to them that way. And, and it's just really beautiful the kind of like light bulb moments you can have with setting these intentions and putting in the action um, to heal this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are a lot of things that we think that we know about. Like we know what are the issues that we need to heal when it comes to parents. But that one sentence, what they said to us maybe ages ago, was mm -hmm. forgotten. And yeah. we need to kind of, I imagine like a knot. And, you know, you find that knot when you're blind and you mm -hmm. untie it. And that's something that I think is important to do. Yeah. And also just communicating with parents. I do think that even if you know that you are not going to change them or if they, like, I don't think we should even try to change them because they're grown up people. And some of them will go that way where they're going to start analyzing themselves, but that's going to be, that has to be their calling as well, you know, mm -hmm. where just expressing what it is that you feel like you don't like and leaving it with them. And it's going to repeat itself. I remember when I came back home, you know, I'm so used to being independent and doing my thing where 10 years later I have to live with my parents again. And, uh, I came back home and I was so used to doing everything on my own and just, you know, having my space and all of that. And my mm -hmm. mom is that person who worries about everything too much. She would, you know, uh, run around, she'd wash my, um, wash my clothes. She would make food and she would ask me five times a day if I want tea. And I was like, I was feeling suffocated. So I went to her and I said, mom, don't suffocate me with love. Like, this is not, I know that you love me. But mm -hmm. this is not okay. 
because yeah. and I started explaining her how that is impacting our relationship um mm -hmm. she listened but it had like nothing changed because she's right. she's her you know and I'm not yeah. going to try to change her but as long as I said it you know out loud yeah. I released it and I mean yeah it's there yeah so every yeah. time now don't get pissed off as I used to anymore when I was you know a teenager I just go don't suffocate me and she does need an explanation she just goes okay you know so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think speaking has a very, and you know, putting it out there from that throat chakra has the biggest impact. And it might be difficult for people who don't have maybe that parent with them anymore or who um, don't even know maybe where that parent went, you know, when some mm -hmm. parents leave them. Yeah. So I think that's a great way that what you said, doing that through going up there, you know, and mm -hmm. getting visions and, you know, working it that way. But I think yeah. if you put meditation together with speaking, that would be the most powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And also um, on that, like, there's a couple other things I want to mention, too, that can make it more powerful. Um, like, I realize that I have my best um, ideas or insights or meditations when there's a full moon. So if you're like, I'm not getting through and there's not there's not help, like, I, I swear, like, every time... Like sometimes I get forced into a meditation because of a full moon because the energy is so mm -hmm. powerful. Like a couple full moons ago, it was like six o'clock or five o'clock in the morning. It was so early for me. I don't usually get up that early. And all these like intuitive downloads, I went through my whole childhood. All of my emotions came up, why I felt the way I did. I had so many positive insights. I was crying. I was healing. I was like, I wasn't even trying. I just like, I was woken up and like, I was kind of. It came out of you. It. it was like, this is happening right now the energy is perfect for this um and i just i just really encourage people to do that and then also like you were saying like if your parents not here or someone ran out on you or maybe you're adopted or something and you don't or you don't have a close enough connection to your parents to want to talk to them or um you know writing a letter to them not giving it to them but writing a letter to them is so healing too just writing down like you know, how you feel towards them, what you loved about them, what you hated about them, what, you know, like all mm -hmm. everything that's therapeutic too. You'll get so many insights just from doing that. Um, Cause sometimes I do that all the time. I'll write letters to people that I'm not even going to give to them. Like I have a relationship yeah. with my boyfriend right now and I'm processing some things that we've been healing some of our past traumas because it's been the most healing relationship ever. And I wrote a letter to him the other day that I don't even know if I'm going to send him or talk to him about it. Cause I'm still kind of like, but it's helping me process what we're going through yeah. right now. And um, sometimes I write letters to myself. Like, it's just, it's just really healing. So There's I feel like. There's a lot of power to yeah. write in it. Like, I always say to people, if you want to ground your wishes or the next step, write it down. There is a power to it. And uh, every, like, I don't do it very often myself. I do it when I, whenever I feel like I need something yeah. to be released or when I need something what I need to write down, what is the next step? Because sometimes we feel like, okay, the next week I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be working on that. So I write it down. And the moment I write it down, everything just starts like unfolding, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm being pushed into it, even if I forget about it. So there is a lot of power when it comes to this. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's one thing to think about something, but we have like thousands and thousands of thoughts a day. I can't remember how much, but on average, it's so many so when you write something down, it, it takes priority over those thoughts. And a lot of these th thoughts that we have aren't positive. They're negative. They're subconscious. Yeah. They're, they're kind of, so it kind of brings clarity to our intentions, to our mind, to everything. And I think, you know, we can even correlate this with tarot because for those of you that are interested in tarot or, you know, like, I mean, I, I feel like most people watching our videos are interested in tarot, but I mean, doing it for yourself, even um, like having your own Oracle deck or tarot deck. Um, you know, that's kind of similar to writing for me because because when you're putting down the images, you're putting down the tarot cards, you're you're taking your thoughts, your emotions, mm -hmm. and you're putting them in a picture on paper and you're seeing yeah. them at, outside of your mind and it's bringing structure to it. It's bringing clarity and new insight. So I feel like if you're like, I don't like to write, I, I don't feel comfortable speaking. Like I don't, if, if none of this is like resonating for you, maybe you feel comfortable getting an Oracle deck and working with that kind of energy because that's similar to what we're talking about. Yeah, that's a really okay. good example. Yeah. It's like you see it in front of you. And I see, you know, a lot of people who are intuitives and they come for consultation or tarot reading, I like saying, you know, everything, everything I'm about to tell you has already crossed your mind. So they just, a lot of people come in, they're already so high up there. They just yeah. need 
to ground it and to go like, I knew it, you know? A lot of people are like this, you know? Whatever you tell them, it's not new as if you bring it out of them and give them the information and go, here it is, you know? You're helping, we're almost like helping people organize their thoughts and their yeah. beliefs and like the energy that, because everything gets so chaotic within your mind and your your body so yeah. really we just are like okay let's let's clean you up let's put, put it in boxes yeah put everything in that part you know where it's supposed to be on the shelf and then you can then you're in a clean room and it's like you can think more clearly when you're in a clean space you know or you can think clear not more clearly but you know what I mean <laughs> yeah that's for sure is there anything you'd like to share from your own personal life hmm yeah, so many things. Um, about like tarot or just anything. Whatever you feel like, honestly. Yeah. Um, okay. I would say that I mean getting back, I kinda wanna talk um again about what I was talking about earlier with that full moon meditation I had. Um, because what happened was when I was going through my past, I felt like I was going through my whole childhood. From when I was like born to when I was like, no, sorry, sorry, someone's trying to come in my room. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I, <laughs> Hello. I'm like, no, did I? I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, when I was born um, to when I was like, you know, in, in my teens. And, you're, and it's probably thinking, well, like, how could you remember that? How could you remember like what actually happened? And it wasn't really like that. It was like I could remember how I felt like that I could, I remember the emotions and the energy. So really, I think like paying attention to our emotions that guide us, because I was feeling really kind of like, um, I guess, uh, lost, scared, confused. I, I viewed the world of really as a really frightful place when I was little. I thought people had like bad intentions. Um, I thought everybody was really sad and I needed to like cheer them up. And I, I just had like a very um, kind of limiting, you know, uh, viewpoint on the world when I was little. And I'm still struggling with some of that today. I feel a lot of that, um, but I'm still struggling with that. I still sometimes um, can see the world in that, in that mindset. And I think, you know, what I've realized in my healing journey, maybe it's similar for you, but I feel like it comes in like waves and like longer waves. Like, so I'll have days where I, I see the world really positively. Um, I see clearer, my intuition stronger, and I, uh, I feel just stronger and more powerful in my energy. And it'll last like three days, right? And, or at first, it just lasts a few hours, right? When I first started my healing journey, it would last a few hours, I'd feel really strong. And then I would be like three days where I'd feel like crap. And then it'd be like, and then it would come in longer waves where I'd feel really good and powerful in my energy for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go down again. And, and I think that's important for people to realize on their healing journey that you don't just get to the certain point and then you're good. And then you're there. It's kind of, they just come in and in, in long, the waves get longer. Like the good waves yeah. get longer. They get, they get bigger. <laughs> that makes sense. That's kind yeah. of what I experience. I experience more peace too in that. Like more trust, like when I'm trying to trust the universe, they come in longer moments, right? Mm -hmm. Longer waves. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. You keep it up there for longer, but then you, you always have to go down because right. that's what balance is. That's the yin exactly. and yang, right? There's no other way. And it's fine. Like today, for example, I woke up, I think, 7. I went to sleep 3 a.m. And I woke up 7.50 or so. And I knew, like, okay, this is going to be an interesting day. And I tried sleeping again, but there were so many things running through my mind, you know, as if you, you turn on an engine and it doesn't stop. You know, mm -hmm. the moment I woke up, I'm like, it's one of those days. So yeah. today yeah. is going to be a day. So what I started doing, I started changing you know, my routine a bit because I'm so lacking in energy that what I did instead of what I usually do, I have my coffee, I go through my emails, you know, I look at the screen. I went to the shower with the coffee. I played the music and I was just there, you know, having my spa to kind of tell myself, hey, you're not lacking in energy. This is actually amazing. And I kind of reprogrammed myself to being having a really productive day actually where I before yeah. I would have gone like oh my god I'm gonna have to go and nap you know and I know you know I'm really bad at napping I used to be so good at it but because of that whole spiritual transition I'm just it's difficult for me to quiet down zero myself mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Because I have to zero myself when I do readings and that's what I use it for. But when I don't do it, it's sometimes difficult for me to use it for myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is all about reprogramming yourself. And this day turned out being, you know, the most productive one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, I, I, I relate to that. And and I think every time it's a, it's a little bit different of how I handle it. Like sometimes like you're like, okay, I'm in a funk. Like, how can I get out of this funk? Or sometimes you're in a funk and you're like, I'm just going to be in this funk. I'm going to exactly. accept it. I mean, you have to kind of just see where it takes you. Um, and if you're like deciding like, okay, I'm going to be in this funk, like maybe you should journal about it. Maybe you should meditate mm-hmm. about it. Maybe you just need a day off from being so busy and it's okay to watch Netflix. Maybe you need to, like you said, grab some coffee, put on some good music and get and shake it out of you. I mean, it's always different. It's always different. And I still yeah. experience that. Like I still experience anxiety. I still experience some depression where I wake up and I was like, heavy feeling on my chest and I just feel like nothing I do is good enough and nothing I do is is getting me I just feel like everything slows down and you're like ah and your mind kind of like oh starts overthinking so like you know for those of you watching like we're still experiencing these these energies we still we're just we're more aware of kind of like what's happening we're kind of you know more aware of what different techniques we can do and um honoring like our intuition like okay what what, what does my body want right now? What, how can I grow from this? How can I learn from this? And how can I practice like some acceptance to uh, what, how my body's feeling? Cause we're still healing a lot of our past and, and not just our past, but our ancestral line, you know? Yeah, that is so true. You know, you are talking about depression and what I remembered, like literally just behind me on that wall, which is right now, there used to be a wallpaper when I was, um, I think around, 16 or so and at that time on and off until I think 22 24 I had really bad on and off depression so on that wall uh, there was a quote from one of the songs I don't remember the whole of it but I remember the last part saying the downward the downward spiral is my life and dot 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 because those times were the most difficult times for me and when I came back home now with a new approach, you know, a new way of being where, yes, I still do get depressed and it does affect me, but it's not the depression, that proper one where I couldn't get out of the bed and I didn't want to do anything and yeah. the whole world didn't, didn't interest me, you know, where, and I'm actually laying on the same bed. So I think this is, again, the healing energy. And for a lot of people, it's important to understand that sometimes people are depressed not only because of what is happening in their life but sometimes it's your soul that is telling you you need to find your purpose Mm -hmm. and that is very important the moment I found my purpose I've started realizing how things have changed because you're already pouring your heart into something that you like and you find your purpose what you want to do but it doesn't mean that even if you're going to do things that you love doing or live in the most comfortable space, right, without any, for example, responsibilities at all, apart from your work, it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy. I still wake up and I'm like, what is going on with you, you know? Yeah. You're living comfortably, you don't need to run around, you don't have children, you don't have any attachments, and mm-hmm. you're doing your best job and you love it, but you still wake up like shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> important. <laughs> To realize it's not that you have a bad life or, you know, your, I don't know, your situation sucks so much. It's always going to suck from day to day. You know, it's not like you're going to have it perfect. Yeah. And I, I love that you said that because I agree with you. Like this year has been a lot has changed for me. Like I, I found my soul's purpose and I you know have this amazing boyfriend. I mean, we're, he lives in Australia, so he's far from me because I'm in the States, but, um, you know, all these amazing energies have come in and, uh, but I still have these, these days. And, you know, I thought a year ago, like, oh, if I just I meet my, you know, I meet my soul tribe and my, I find my soul's purpose and my soulmate, like, I'll be good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be good. And while, yeah, I'm great. Like, life is amazing. Like, I freaking love it. I still have days where I'm like, is 2020 over yet? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's so true. Like I know a couple of people who have everything you could think. So they have everything together. They rich, they wealthy, they have amazing houses, they have amazing jobs, 
that they actually like doing, but when you ask them how you are, they go, I'm really like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I'm so depressed. Like, I, I don't know what's going to make me happy. So I think that's important to understand. Jim Carrey touches on it, on it very well, you know. I think he was the one who said it, you know, I wish everyone was wealth, wealthy and successful in order to understand that that's not what's going to bring you happiness. You're going to be the same person, but we just have more material gain. And um, regardless of that, it's fine, you know. Whichever phase you are in right now watching this video, like just know that it's fine. It's it's yeah. part of the yin and yang part, you know. It's beautiful, image. and you'll see yourself like in a year from now. Like sometimes I imagine myself from like a year from now, looking back at myself, like kind of just being proud of myself and kind of giving myself a pep talk because you know that a year from now everything's gonna make sense. That you're gonna realize why you went through stuff and. And it's going to happen. Like, I'm telling you, this is your confirmation. Like, for all of you watching, like, in a year from now, you're going to be looking back and be like, oh, this is why that happened. That's why this relationship didn't work out. That's why I had this health problem. This is why I felt depressed. This is why, this is why, this is why. And you're going to be in a different sense of gratitude. You're going to be in a different energy. Things are going to be, you know, so much clearer. And, and, and then you're going to have like a new set of problems, but it's, it's all part of it. It's all, you know, part of life and experience and the up and down, right? Because we can't have the light without the dark. Exactly. What I really liked about this, this might sound weird, that you said you're going to have a new set of problems and uh, you're always going to have a new set of problems the same way where you are setting yourself a goal that maybe, okay, five years from now, I'm going to have my own house. So let's say you get there and then you're going to have another goal and it's a never ending story. Yeah. So enjoy the journey. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Exactly. Enjoy the journey. <laughs> Find the gratitude and the love every day that you can. Um, Cause I used to, I remember during my journey, I practiced gratitude a lot and I've been slacking in that lately. And I, I've noticed the, the effect it has on me. And I noticed when I start getting into that space and speaking out loud, what I'm grateful for, it's like, a lot of shifts happen and uh, I just feel better. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's a big thing too. That's a big thing. I mean, there's so many things we talked about in this video. <laughs> I feel, I like, it flowed, how I feel like it flowed well. And like, if any of you are like wondering about something we talked about and you wanted more, uh, comp you know, more information on it, just like yeah. shoot down a question and we'll get back to you. Like, we'll, we'll do our best to respond on everything. So. Yeah, let's do that. So, like the comments that you see the topics that you want us to touch on and i think we will choose one of them maybe for the next time yeah definitely okay is there anything else you want to share for everybody or i feel like we covered a lot of good stuff. i think so i think we covered much more than we thought we would <laughs> yeah it's funny because a lot of the stuff that we went over before we filmed it was like it was very different than what came out but i kind of anticipated that you know yeah yeah so it was really nice to talking to you. And everyone's going to see Megan back on my channel. And you're probably going to see me back on Megan's channel. Yes, yes, nice. yes. And we will keep in touch. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're going to catch you the next time. All right. Bye. Bye.